Well, hey, welcome back to our series we're doing called The Ten Commandments of Progressive Christianity. If you've actually been watching all of them, you've now come to the end. This is the ultimate video in uh, this series. Um, but if for some reason this is the first video you're watching, we are doing a series on Michael Kruger's book, The Ten Commandments of Progressive Christianity. Nice uh, yellow title right here, very eye-catchy. And uh, we've been looking at these different tenets of those that might fall in the more progressive spectrum as it comes to Christian uh, doctrine. And we've been having a really interesting discussion about how a lot of them are about half true, and you have to be really discerning to understand what the problems with them are. So we've looked at nine commandments, and commandment number 10 is one that we all have to really deal with, and it's this. Life, is, life in this world is more important than the afterlife. That's commandment number 10. And so um, what, he, uh, what he says at the beginning of the chapter is essentially this. As we've come to the final commandment, it's hard to imagine a single statement that better captures the ethos of progressive Christianity than this one. And that's because those that typically fall on the progressive spectrum um, don't talk a whole lot about heaven and the afterlife, but about what happens in the here and now. And again, there's some truth to how we should care about what God's doing right now, but that does not negate the importance of what happens after we die. What would you think? say about that, Dave? Yeah, a lot of this chapter focused on a book by Philip Gully called If the Church Were Christian, Rediscovering the Values of Jesus. Mm. Um, and this particular commandment does the three things that progressive Christianity usually does. Okay, so number one, it's a focus on man, not God. Number two, it downplays doctrine for morality. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, it claims uncertainty while at the same time in a sneaky way being very certain. It claims to be uncertain, <laughs> but it really actually, if you think about it, it's actually really They, they ask leading questions that are making points and right. still acting like they're just asking questions. Right. Yeah. So again, uh, it prioritizes the horizontal over the vertical, and that's yeah. a pattern as well. And frankly, it just discounts hell. Uh, and I don't think that that gives a complete view of Scripture. Yeah. Uh, the Bible talks about hell. Jesus talked about hell. Um, and so this chapter, I think, is described as humble seeking, but it's actually quite certain in a conviction that there is no hell. So it, it's a mask of, I'm just seeking, I'm just on the journey, I'm just discovering, but it's also saying there can't be any such thing as hell. Um, so I would say uh, it's not complete in its biblical theology of the afterlife. Also, I think that we should care about human suffering. So, I mean, again, half true. Life in this world is important. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. We should care about human suffering. We should care about temporary suffering as Christians, as Christ followers. Yeah. We should also care about eternal suffering. So I don't think those two things are mutually exclusive. I think both can be true. We can care about... Yeah suffering in this life, we can also care about suffering in the next life. Uh, hell is something that Jesus talked about. He said things like this, don't fear the one who can yeah. just destroy the body. Be afraid of the one who can destroy both body and soul mm -hmm. in hell. Mm -hmm. yeah. Th those are not the words of like Charles Spurgeon. Those are not the words of Jonathan Edwards. Those are the words of Jesus, Jesus himself. Christ. Yeah. And so we have to take those words seriously. Uh, we're in a series through Philippians and, and you know Paul says to live is Christ, to die is gain. Eternal hope is something important yeah. that we have to And we emphasize. did a whole series on Ecclesiastes, which seemed to emphasize death is coming a whole lot. So we really should be thinking about what happens after we die. Right. And not just death, but after that, there's a judgment yeah. that we have to worry about. So um, heaven is a great hope. Uh, it's a great hope in the New Testament, in the epistles. We have this hope of glory. It's, it's called our blessed hope. That's a motivator towards endurance today. Because mm -hmm. there is something on the other side, and we're going to get there. There's a race, and we're going to finish. And so I think we should care about this life, but I think we should also care about the afterlife. Yeah. You know, Dave, since this is the last video in this series, maybe we could give some people some exhortations on uh, if you encounter these type of um, doctrines in your life or in conversations you're having with folks, how should we uh, respond? How should we be discerning uh, other than reading the book here? Yeah, this is a great book. Uh, I have mentioned this before on this video series, but Jay Gresham Machen's book uh, called Christianity and Liberalism is the classic about this topic. There's a lot of good stuff out there in terms of apologetic resources, but be prepared. Do your homework, do your study, 
have an answer yeah. to these things. Send them this video. Uh, we would love to engage with you about these types of topics as well. And don't be afraid, I think, to um, to ask questions and, and lovingly point out uh, concerns and uh, truths that you see um, need to be brought up from Scripture. Let me give you a C.S. Lewis quote as we kind of wrap up this uh, video mm. and this whole series. Here's something that Lewis said that kind of struck me. He said, our business is to present that which is timeless, the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow in the particular language of our own age. The bad preacher does exactly the opposite. The core of his thought is merely contemporary. He only focuses on the traditional in his age. So I think we need to also mm -hmm. keep in mind that the church has passed down truth through the generations and um, they've paid a high price in order to deliver to us that which the apostles delivered to them once for all. Let's keep it intact and let's uh, continue to contend for the faith. Yeah, and yet at the same time, also know as you're contending for the faith, God has put you in this time. So these things might be coming up more and more often, and God may be calling you to step in, um, step into the arena and be a contender for him. Great. Hey, check and this book out. We hope you've enjoyed this video series, Michael Kruger, The Ten Commandments of Progressive Christianity. I think you'll be blessed by it. God bless.